There is a type of loop um, in programming called a for loop. Um, we can also call these iterative loops. And it basically combines um, creating the variable that's going to control the loop, the condition, and how you're going to update the variable all in a heading. Um, these are really useful if you know how many times the loop needs to go or if you are counting by a set amount. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to know like the exact number. It could be based on a, an inputted variable or something, um, but it is specifically for counting a certain number of repetitions. So here's what it looks like. Um, you write the word for, and then in your parentheses, instead of just a single condition, you actually have um, three separate uh, things happening. So the first thing is that you can make a loop control variable. I'm just going to call it i, um, short for iterations. You can call this variable whatever. And this first part is where you tell it what to start counting at. So I'm going to start my counter at 0. And then I have a semicolon, but I'm not done. Um, this first thing is called your initialization expression because you're telling the loop control variable, what do you want to be initialized to? What do you want to start at? My thing that goes in the middle is my continuation condition. So what should be true um, for this loop to repeat? So I'm going to let it go while i is less than 5. So this is my continuation condition. So so long as my loop control variable is under 5, this loop is going to repeat. And then my third piece is called my update expression. And I specify here how I would like to count. So maybe I want to count up by ones. And I can do that a couple of ways. I can write i plus plus. Or I can say i equals i plus one. These all do exactly the same thing. Or I can say i plus equals one. Most of the times when you're counting by ones, you will see people use plus plus or if they're counting down minus minus. Okay. So this loop is going to run a total of um, however many times it takes to count from 0 to 5. I'm going to put in here, um, I'm just going to print them so we can see what happens. So let's run this thing and see what we get on the screen. Okay, so I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I had, it has run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 total times. It started at 0. And then it did its action so long as this was true. Now, if I want to trace the order in which it does the things I've written on screen, when I come to this loop, it does this, then it checks this, then it does this statement inside, and once it hits the final curly, it jumps back up and updates the variable, then checks the condition again, and if it's true, it does this. At the point when it updates and checks the condition again and the condition is false, your execution jumps to right here after the loop. Okay, I don't have to count up by one. I could count up by twos. So to do that, I'm going to change this to that. And let's make this go a little bit longer because we're going to have less stuff coming out because we're only printing every other number. So if I want to count up by twos, I can do that. Now I'm going 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. What if I wanted to include the 10? Well, I have some options. I can either change this number to 11, or I can put an equal sign here. And now it will include the time when it is equal to 10 in my print. Okay. I also don't have to count forwards. I can count backwards. So what if I want to count down from 10 by 2s? And this is the big part that students mostly miss when they flip this to go backwards. They remember to set this to a new starting value. They remember to make this count down, but they forget that this guy has to change as well. So I want to keep this going while it's greater than or equal to zero. So if I'm counting down, the value here should be larger than the value here, and this, the direction of this um, should flip. So let's verify that that works. Yep, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Nice. 